to the show. My next guest is uh, truly one of the most original music talents working today. His latest album right here is called Swordfish Trombones, and he describes it as being made up of journal entries from an exotic odyssey. Please welcome, it's a real delight to have this man with us tonight, Mr. Tom Waits. <laughs> Well, Frank settled down out in the valley, and he hung his wild years on a nail that he drove through his wife's forehead. He sold used office furniture out there on San Fernando Road, and he assumed a $30,000 loan at 15 and a quarter percent, and he put a down payment on a little two-bedroom place. Well, his wife was a spent piece of used jet trash. She made good Bloody Marys. She kept her mouth shut most of the time. And they had a little chihuahua named Carlos that had some kind of a skin disease and was totally blind. <laughs> and Frank drove a little sedan. They had a thoroughly modern kitchen. They were so happy. And one night Frank was on his way home from work. He stopped at the liquor store. And he picked up a couple of Mickey's Big Mouths and he drank them in the car on the way to the Shell station. He got a gallon of gas in a can, and he drove home, he doused everything in the house. <laughs> Torched it. And he parked across the street laughing, watching it burn. All Halloween orange and chimney red. And then Frank put on a top 40 station, got on the Hollywood freeway, headed north. Never could stand that dog. <laughs> Terrific job. Thank you very much. We're going to do a commercial. Uh, we're going to pause here for a second. We'll be back. Tom's going to sing another song. Very nice, sir. Enjoy, though. Tom Waits is here. Later, we'll take a look at our giant late-night Christmas card, and Dr. Charles Levy, the dangerous animal expert, is going to be here. Congratulations uh, on the album, Tom. I uh, was reading... You have, what is that you're brushing off here? I don't know, I ran into a Christmas tree in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere this They're time of year, aren't they? Room. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I was going to say congratulations on the album. You're getting, it's getting terrific uh, reviews, isn't it? Yeah, some people are uh, recognizing it. And uh, it's really uh, kind of an odyssey uh, journey. The songs interrelate. I, uh, there's 15 of them. I, I think you get more for your entertainment dollar. <laughs> well, that's good. If you play some of the songs backwards, it's this dirty thing. That oh, that's great. Right. So, you, so you really are, for the price of one album, getting all kinds of entertainment there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for some new consumers and attempting to cook my dinner on your stove, possibly. Well, sure, well, that's, that's what our stove is here for, Tom. Um, <laughs> speaking of stoves, are you still living in the motel on Santa Monica Boulevard in California? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you spend some time there at the uh, Tropicana? I did spend some time at a, a um, well, I don't know, motel. I'd call it a palatial uh, state. Uh-huh. Um, uh, right on Santa Monica Boulevard there uh, on the other side of La Cienega. This is where Duke's Coffee Shop is? Yeah, yeah that's right beneath yeah. the hotel. You had your piano in the kitchen. You've been reading my mail. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you're not there anymore, huh? No, no longer. Uh, travel has become an important part of my life. Yeah, yeah. You lived in a house trailer for a while? Just for a brief period. Now, what was that like as an experience for a man it's of the small. world like yourself? It's, uh, it's close, but you can always pick up and move the next day. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, you also, for a while, uh, years ago, lived in a car? Well, not for an extended period of time, but <laughs> <laughs> you know how those accommodations can be. Yeah, yeah. What kind of car was it? It was a 62 wagon, black interior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, did you do much entertaining in those days? Uh, you mean, uh, you mean nightclubs, that type of thing? No, no, I mean friends drop over, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I know where you're trying to take this. No, no, I, was just, I just think it's interesting, but also, and correct me if this is not the truth, 
you were born in a piece of modern transportation, weren't you? According to my Uncle Robert, yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know. People say a lot of things. But was it a cab you were supposedly born in? It was a uh, red and white. The, uh, you know, meter running. Well, the meter was running. And uh, uh, where was this? In Indiana. No, really? Yeah. What part of Indiana? Uh, uh, it's a place called Valparaiso. Oh, sure, I know where that is. Yeah. Uh, no, I do. I, I'm from Indiana myself, so I know well, that. I spent a lot of time in California, North Dakota, Minnesota, Florida, yeah. Guam. Guam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, now, for, uh, for a, a man who, was, who started life in the backseat of a red and white cab, uh, last year you were nominated for an Academy Award. This is a, a long trip. You actually, yeah. you went to the, the award ceremony, didn't you? For the, it was for the music for uh, One from the Heart. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what was that like for you being there? Well, um, you know, I I went back and forth as well. I mean, I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna go. I I couldn't make up my mind. In terms of fashion, I I don't know. I would have to classify it as a cotillion. You know, it's, uh, it's a lot of 1959 prom formals and that type of thing. Yeah. And uh, so. Uh, did you have a tuxedo? As a matter of fact, I did. Yeah. An old clothes horse like myself was uh, <laughs> uh, in the right place. Yeah. Did uh, what was the uh, what made you decide to show up for the uh, presentation? Well, you know, I mean, you really are are nominated by by people who are in your field, and uh, a lot of uh, composers and songwriters and musicians uh, uh, recognize the score from uh, the Coppola film. Yeah. And uh, so it really is a is flattering. Yeah, but you know, there was a time when people would think, well, it's, it's not really chic or hip. You're nominated, sure, but I'll be busy that night. I'll, you know. But you decided to show up and. Well, we were living like three, four blocks from the place. <laughs> <laughs> so I just drop in. What the it's heck? Really, it was very simple. Uh, now, you, you mentioned earlier, Tom, about the, the concept of the album, uh, Swordfish Trombones. Go into that a little bit. This is uh, uh, a combination of sounds you just hear around you all the time that. Uh, Music ought to be more what you're accustomed to hearing on the streets and in your house and so on and so forth. Is that close? Am I getting warm there? Well, let's see. Frank really is the central protagonist uh, uh, who really kind of came to me in a dream and he spoke to me of many things. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, so it's really, uh, I was trying to find uh, uh, musical instruments that were more nightmarish or you know, dream like there's some unusual things on here as far as instruments go aren't they uh brake drums yeah that's the ones that uh, you can find just about in any automobile wrecking yeah yeah and you use for for percussion those things yeah you hit them with uh something that uh you hit them with anything you hit them with a rock <laughs> <laughs> uh tom we gotta uh, we gotta do another commercial and then you're gonna sing another song for us you mind yeah, sure. oh terrific it'd be our delight uh we gotta pause folks we'll be right back <laughs> 